Alright guys, welcome to, I guess, our first and slash last battle in our series on the War of the Third Coalition. I had some more in my notes, but when I looked more into the casualty counts for the other battles, they all had pretty one-sided results, uh, I believe all from France, where the casualty counts for France were so low that... Uh, they kind of basically equate to battles that I won't do for this series. But if there's any other battles uh, in this war you guys want me to cover, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll look into it. But we were coming at you with the Battle of Austerlitz. The sort of climactic showdown of the third war, or the war of the Third Coalition. I always word that wrong. Uh, but this battle is a showdown between France and Austria, along with, I believe, Russia as well. And we're actually going to do a 2v2 for this battle. Uh, one Russia and one Austria faction, and then I'm going to be playing as France, and we just have a second French faction out there. And I believe we divided things pretty evenly, though we do have Napoleon involved in this battle himself. So what that means is uh, we are going to have the awesome Imperial Guard, which consists of some pretty elite units, uh, and I'm going to be playing as Napoleon's half of the army. So I'm going to get all of the Guard units, uh, but the numbers are about equal. So what that means is this other French army is actually going to get a lot more uh, troops than I do, but they're all going to be uh, like normal troops, and I'm going to have less soldiers, but higher quality soldiers, uh, but I do have some light infantry, so not all of my troops are like elite, elite boys. Uh, so this is where, uh, you know, I basically think about what this army is most likely to do. So because this is controlled by the AI, they will likely go on the attack, which means that if I don't help them, then I'm going to have to fight Austria and Russia by myself, uh, almost the entirety, because they'll just focus on one army at a time if I let them. But I also know that we're a little bit outnumbered here. Uh, France coming into this fight with 68,000 troops, Austria and Russia combined force of 84,000. So we also can't exactly fight these guys on equal terms either. So we can't fight one of us versus two of them. And we can't fight two of us versus two of them. So my plan is to combine both of those. We're going to send a small force forward to help this group fight uh, the first stage of the battle. And we're going to hold the bulk of our forces back. Or at least the bulk of our best forces back. And fight both armies after they overcome our first wave. And hopefully that works. <laughs> uh, looks like enemy artillery starting to open up on the French six pounders, some light artillery that are getting into position to uh, start firing up a little bit close to the enemy. See these guys open up. Or maybe not. You guys gonna fire? There we go. They're getting some hits on the uh, Russian cavalry back here. French cavalry making a quick opening move by charging boldly. Uh, looks like some. Chevrolet Gap, which are, you know, like Lancers. Lancers moving in to fight. They're also sending, I believe this is more Chevrolet Gap. Going, against, going up against some of the Russian Dragoons. And now charging some of the Russian line. Infantry of the line out here.
By the way, the French commander, like we said, Napoleon himself. For Russia and Austria, we have Alexander I, Mikhail Kuzov, Francis II, and Franz von Verwalter. It looks like the Russian infantry shifting a lot of their army to the center, maybe in response to the French cavalry assaults, sending in some cuirassiers. These are the heavy boys. Maybe the fight. Now, elsewhere on the battlefield, it looks like there's a bit of a fight over here as well. Some chef, Chesse à Cheval, which are the elite light cavalry, going up against some Russian Cossacks. And uh, France sending some light infantry to help out over there. Some Chesse à Pied, or uh, uh, Infanterie de la Guerre. Light infantry. Uh, they threw down some spikes to help protect the artillery. Good job. Some chasseur pieds, some more light cavalry moving up. Uh, but uh, or light infantry moving up. But the French light infantry starting to get into position as Russian Cossacks charge their lines. Big chaotic over here. Now I believe these are my carabiners getting some shots on the Russian Cossacks moving in. Uh, the Austrian line infantry starting to move into position. I think we're chasing a lot of those guys off. We threw down some stakes over here with some line infantry on the ridge. To help protect against cavalry assaults. And it looks like that's working. We've got some Austrian cuirassiers moving in. Hungarian hussars, I believe, were going to charge the position. Saw the spikes and decided not to. But our... Infantry de la Guerre getting some nice shots of the cuirassiers of the Austrian army that are going to charge those spikes. Any of those stakes going to kill those guys? Come on. Where are the mechanics here, people? A uh, lot of my cavalry holding back, by the way. And uh, my lead's still back there. Moving some of my... I think these are my line infantry. I'm moving up a little bit. And looks like some grenadiers, maybe from the other army, moving to hold our center together. But over here on our left, it looks like the other French army is struggling pretty intensely to hold a lot of these guys back. We've got the light artillery still firing, trying to support their boys up at the front, but I'm not sure if we can hold. We got light infantry getting some flanking fire in on the Russians over here. Russian artillery firing. Come on, soldier, fire that gun! We don't have time for misfires! And uh, I think these guys are shattered. Yeah, see? Huge break of the other French army. And these guys are doing what they can, but um, this is where I consider very strongly a withdrawal of my line because I can't take both of these armies on by myself in the position where I'm at right now. That's it. That's where I call the withdrawal. We're going to try to fall back. Our, our artillery, fortunately, is doing a nice cover of the retreat. I, w I wouldn't call it a retreat, but a tactical withdrawal as we're getting our forces the heck in out of there. Light infantry going to hold a little bit longer up here, though. Uh, but we are going to pull them back as well pretty soon. But yeah, Austrian Grenadiers showing up in the fight. And, uh, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna... If I'm going to defeat these boys, I can't do it here. Russian Light Dragoons harassing our Light Infantry as they fall back. Uh, I believe these are even my Grenadiers. And I think this is where I send the Grenadiers in, and we're gonna use the Grenadiers to hold back this entire army while the rest falls back. Light Infantry starting to fall back as well. We're getting them out of there. But they're, 
Grenadiers. The French Grenadiers. They're going to make a last stand to hold back the Austro Russian or the Russo Austrian, however you want to phrase it, army. We've got, uh, these are our Grenadier Guards, I believe, up on this hill, the Elite Grenadiers. Oh, nice kill from the officer. But these guys are getting overrun. Grenadier is going to fight to the last. And what's nice is it's working. It's distracting a lot of the Russo-Austrian forces long enough to get my main troops back to uh, that hill where we're going to try to hold these guys back. We've got some Austrian Grenadiers in this fight now. We got all kinds of troops feeding into this, trying to surround our grenadiers here, but we're gonna fight hard. But uh, elsewhere, we've got the main force of our enemy's position now moving in. We're pulling our lights back. I believe these are some of the other army's lights that are shattered to light infantry as well. We're gonna use our chasseur à pied, cover this flank over here, along with support from the carabiners, light cavalry that can fire from horseback, and along with some shadow. Chevaux de Gare, more troops that can fire from horseback to the elite light cavalry. Over here we've got our artillery. These guys, real MVPs of the battle, holding these, uh, oh my god, these guys back as our grenadiers are still somehow fighting out there. We're forming a thin line with the Chasseur PA. And I think what we're doing with them is we're laying stakes to help defend the artillery. Looks like we've taken out one of the enemy commanders, too. Oh, that's going to be a huge morale break for which, uh... It was... I'm not sure which army that was, but that's going to be a huge success for us. Great, great uh, win. Much wow. It's like the Austrians launching a, a bayonet charge against our line. Our artillery now, I believe, firing canister shot into the faces of the incoming troops. I think our I think our grenadiers are still fighting out here. Oh, I just got right beta to the sternum. Oh. Now those guys uh, admittedly won't hold much longer, uh, so we'll focus on the main fight over here. We've got, now I believe officially uh, this unit here is supposed to represent uh, dismounted dragoons. Uh, there was something that I found in the French army in this battle is they had like elite dragoons that fought dismounted, so I think that's what this unit officially is supposed to be here. They're getting some shots off on some Austrian grenadiers preparing for a charge up this hill. The scale for this battle, by the way, I believe we have it on 25 to 1. But it might be as as low as twenty to one. So each soldier you see here represents somewhere between twenty to twenty-five that were at the historical battle. Our cavalry now going in for a charge because we can't afford for our lines to break. Over here we already have a little bit of a cav charge into the Russian or the Austrian lines are into the Austrian troops with a chasseur like a chevaux de guerre. Our light infantry do a little bit of a duel with some uh, or some lights infantry de la guerre dueling with some of the Austrian line infantry. But we are breaking the Austrians uh, one unit at a time. The Russians now charging in as their Austrian allies shatter under the weight of the heavy knife that is 
French cold steel cutting through the butter of these unprofessional barbarian Austrians and Russians. Uh, we've got some Cossacks routing our Grenadier guards, holding the line for Napoleon, our artillery, hammering canister shot into these guys. Got some Grenadiers uh, dueling with our elite dismounted Dragoons here, but our, our boys are getting some nice shots off on those Grenadiers. And I think our Grenadiers out there are finally shattered after holding off so much of the enemy forces. So we do have a massive bayonet charge from the Austrians now. Uh, that being said, we have a lot of our own cavalry charging out boldly into some of the retreating army because we don't want them coming back to the fight. We can't afford them coming back to the fight. Carabiners charging way out there to take out an enemy artillery placement. Who's going to prove vital to our success later in this battle. A lot of the Austrian artillery hasn't even moved very far forward, but they've got some Grenzers that are pushing out their own elite light infantry. Huge push by Russia to send their light infantry to take out our... Cannons, but it looks like they just cannot summon the courage to charge our boys on this thin white line of a hill behind these uh, nice wooden stakes here. They're going to finally go for the assault. Tired but confident as our artillery just smashes through these reserve troops waiting to get the call to charge forward. These guys hesitating after every footstep, getting shot, point blank, even the officer pulling his pistol out. Ooh. Giving us time to get a lot of hot lead into these Russian troops. We're going to send the cavalry in. Elsewhere, we have line infantry mostly uh, holding the line. It looks like most of the Austrian forces have uh, been neutralized. We're bringing our cavalry back from their bold sally out assault to take out that artillery placement. Over here, the Russians trying to repel this counterattack from my cavalry as my artillery pounds into these guys. We have our guard grenadiers taking some casualties as they hold this hill. Firing into some Russian Grenadiers at the bottom of the hill down there. Who are now wavering. By the way, we do have a Patreon in case you guys are interested. You can enter the link in the video description below. Quick shout out to our Patreon subscribers. Looks like this is where the fight's going to be, boys. As some of the Austrians return to get in on the action. And I think they're finally going to make a move on this uh, group of dismounted dragoons here. The action continues over here as my Chassin Shabal continue to fight. We're sending in a second cavalry charge into this. We've got some Russians moving up on this section over here where I placed infantry in square because of a cavalry attack by Austria. Some household cavalry. I believe this is the elite heavy cavalry of the Austrians. Uh, continuing to duel some light infantry out there with our, our own infantry de la Gale. But our cavalry desperate to break the Russian infantry down here.
And we're going to pull our Grenadiers back from this flank after routing troops over there. We're going to pull them. Oats. Wow, I said Canadian. Oats. Oats over here. Uh, we're going to bring them out over here and uh, get them involved in this fight here at the center. Our dismounted dudes holding wayward Russians back. Holding this hill. The artillery continuing to smash through Russian forces. I believe they are beginning to fire out on some of the Austrian Grenzers out there. We've got Kazakhs coming into the fight now as we make a huge break of the Russian forces. We're going to keep charging these boys. And I believe those Kazakhs are going to withdraw, try to fall back to the artillery. We've got some Grenadiers coming back to the fight as well. But we're going to run a lot of these boys down. Try to route this group of light infantry that are wavering. By the way, the music I've got for you guys today, 18th century music from Prague. Uh, we're fighting this battle in modern-day Czech Republic. And uh, it is only 1805, I believe, so uh, 19th century music isn't exactly on point yet. Uh, so we're still doing some 18th century music instead, but uh, I think that's appropriate. Nice little coup travel for our battle here. And there we go. I think we've broken most of the Russian forces. Elsewhere we've got some... Uh, looks like shattered Austrian line infantry, as well as some Russians retreating. We do have some Austrian Grenzers moving forward. If we take a look here, I don't know what that is, but somebody put stakes down in a really disadvantageous spot for our homeboys out there. Uh, we've got, yeah, the Russian Kazakhs are falling back. I believe these are the Guard Kazakhs. The Russian Guard Cavalry, they're going to retreat to the Austrian artillery to make their last stand over seeing some smoke. Looks like artillery supporting a cav battle over here. I'm not sure who we're fighting. But, oh, okay. We moved in to take out the Russian artillery placement over here. And uh, pretty successfully. Now elsewhere, I believe that's going to be almost it. So we have broken the bulk. We've got the last uh, light infantry from Austria there shattered. I don't know who our artillery is firing at, but you got to silence those guns. Get friendly fire. Um, it looks like we're down to the Russian Cavalry Bodyguard unit and the Austrian Artillery unit. So we are going to fast forward a little bit, but we are going to make a play for these final two units here. With Cavalry, we're also going to move up Infantry in case they the Cavalry can't pull it off. And spoiler alert, they don't. So the Infantry have to make the final assault on this last position. Uh, but this battle is just about over, guys. We're fast-forwarding just to uh, get our troops up to the front there as the Austrian artillery prepared to make a final stand. So you can see I have to move my cavalry very strategically because of these wooden spikes here. I don't want to move my cavalry through there because... Um, we can get a lot of friendly fire or uh, a lot of deaths trying to run through these wooden spikes. Looks like we've got one Russian soldier. Can't find the rest of his unit. He's just running. Just running to the cannons. Make a last stand with those boys. Uh, but we bring it up to carabiners. Like I said, we're going to make a charge on those guns. But the numbers are so thin, that's why they they don't successfully take out uh, the last of the forces here. 
So they get so interesting. Miguel, some of our Lancers. Get into the fight now. I believe these are the uh, Chasseur, Archibald, uh, the Elite Light Cavalry, moving into position two. But they are successfully defending those cannons. Though the wagon trains for them have withdrawn, so there's going to be no retreat today from these artillery crew. As we move the infantry forward again, we'll uh, fast forward past that. We are bringing up uh, Napoleon's Guard de Corps, his Guard Cavalry. So let's see if we can find the officer here. I believe that's the officer. So that would be Napoleon himself on horseback right there for us. Coming up to see why the heck his cavalry could not take out this artillery placement. But we are going on a bold bayonet charge against these boys. Light infantry getting some ranking fire from the flank. And I believe that was actually enough to uh, rout the Russian cavalry. The arrival of our boys in the bayonet charge routing the Austrian artillery crew. And guys, that's going to be the battle. If you like this battle, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more... War battles from 19th century Europe. Let me know in the comments below which battles you'd like to see. And if you want to stay up to date on all of our battle reenactments, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I will see you guys on the next battlefield.